Okay, guys, first section, 1.1. Next week, it's on the board, it's on Canvas. Next Wednesday, you have a quiz over 1112, which we're going to do today, and then 13. We're going to do 13 Monday and part of Tuesday, review for our quiz. Guys, no calculators. We won't be using calculators till probably at, at the earliest, maybe Thanksgiving ish. All right, we're reviewing all of our Algebra 2 stuff. We need to know how to break down radicals and work with fractions and all that good stuff. So, first quiz is going to ask you the basics. You guys have been talking about slope since probably the seventh grade. All right, slope, your formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You're going to be asked the, to find the distance between two points. There's your distance formula. And then midpoint. Those will not be given to you on the quiz. You guys need to know those, okay? So let's make sure that we're on top of things. Here is a random point, okay? Use this point. We're, we're going to find all the different things that are asked of you right here. Slope, all right? Slope, when we use this slope formula, it's on a line, linear. Your slope is going to be constant. It tells you if the, the direction of the line, if it's a positive, it's going from bottom left, top right. If it's a negative, it's going from top left to bottom right. Okay, when we talk about y2 minus y1, <clears throat> you guys, I'm going to tell you little things that I do to make things easier for me so I don't make silly mistakes. You don't have to do these things. When I have two points and they're next to each other, I don't like looking at them left to right for whatever reason. My brain works better when I put them on top of each other. So I'm going to say, okay, one of my points is 8, negative 7, and one of my points is 4, 5. For me, that's easier because I know this first column is my x, the second column is y. Again, you don't have to do that. But sometimes when we're looking at which y I'm going to use, which x I'm going to use, it's easier when they're in a column right in front of your face rather than going left to right with your eyes. Just me. So if I'm going to find the slope between these two points, it's y2 minus y1. Does it really matter which y I start with? No. I can start with 5. And I can say, okay, 5 minus negative 7, yeah? If I start with 5 as my y-coordinate at the top, what do I have to start with for x's on the bottom? 4, right? You have to start with whatever y you start with, you have to start with that corresponding x. So if you switched it around, you're going to get the same answer, just as long as you keep the order correct, all right? Does that make sense with everybody? All right, so when I look at this, all right, be careful with your signs. Some of you are like, can I just put a plus in between there since I already know it's minus a negative? Absolutely. I'm just going to write everything out so you guys can see it. So in my numerator, I have 5 plus a negative. It's going to give me 12 over 4 minus 8 gives me what? Negative 4. So what is the slope between these two points? What's 12 divided by negative 4? Negative 3. So you guys would answer this question, and you would say m equals negative 3. Now, does that negative really make a difference? Yeah, it makes a huge difference. So if you, get, if you guys tell me that slope is 3, the answer is wrong. It's not close. I'm not going to, you just forgot a negative sign. There is a huge difference between the slope of a line being positive 3 and the slope of a line being negative 3. So let's make sure we are paying attention to our signs and we're taking our time. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Let's move on to distance. So I'm going to use those same two points. <clears throat> I like to go ahead and get my distance formula set up. Got my parenthesis here and I squared. My second parenthesis here and it's squared. What goes in the middle of those two big parentheses? Minus sign or plus sign? What goes in the middle in your distance formula? Minus, Minus okay. I like to go ahead and get it set up right away. Now, X's go first, Y's go second. Again here, does it really matter what order you put them in? No. Why in this case does it not matter if you say <clears throat> 8 minus 4 or 4 minus 8? Because there's a difference there. 8 minus 4 is 4, but 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Because it's going to be squared. What happens when you square a number? And it's always what? Positive. So in this case, the thing you really need to pay attention to is keep your x's together, keep your y's together. It doesn't matter which one goes first. So I'm just going to say 8 minus 4. You guys agree with me? Then in my second parenthesis, I'm going to say negative 7 minus 5. Again, if you said 5 minus negative 7, you're going to get the same answer. 
So as we go through here and simplify, ladies and gents, what's 8 minus 4? Okay, don't scare me. 4, so squared. Plus, what's negative 5 minus, sorry, negative 7 minus 5? Negative 7 minus 5. No, negative 12, good. Squared. Now, at this point, we should realize, we should understand, we should know, we are never going to get what kind of a number underneath this radical? Negative. When you measure distance, guys, it's always going to be what kind of a number? Anybody ever go to Lowe's? You ever say, I need negative 17 feet of whatever. No. Distance is always a positive number. So just don't be careless. You should not get a negative number underneath your radical when you talk about distance. So let's go ahead and simplify. What's 4 squared? 16. 16 perfect. What's negative 12 squared? 144. So I have the square root of, what's 16 and 144? 160. Okay, so we're like, whew, God, I'm done. Is this done? How come? You can break that down. Now, a lot of you break down radicals in different ways. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what I do. You're welcome to do it however you are taught. But I like to say, okay, here is my radical, 160. I'm going to do some upside down division. I'm going to start with the smallest prime number I know, which is 2. How many times is 2 going to 160? 80. Okay. Does 2 go into 80? Yeah, so I'm going to do it again. 2 goes into 80 how many times? 40. Okay, do it again. 2 goes into 40 how many times? 20. Do it again. 2 goes into 20 how many times? 10. Again? 2 and 5, all right? All you did right there is a factor tree, guys. I just do it a little different. I don't like to write the little ticky things. Now, <clears throat> what good did this do? Well, any pairs of numbers you have, you can bring outside of the radical. So I have a pair of twos here. You guys agree? Okay, so I'm going to write it here. I have another pair of twos, correct? So I'm going to write it right here, multiply it. And then I have one two and one five. Are either of those perfect squares, is that a pair of anything? No, so that's going to go. We're going to multiply those together. It's going to stay underneath the radical. What is two times five? Ten. And on the outside, what is two times two? Four. So when I break down 160, it's actually four square root of 10. Now, again, if you don't like that way, that's fine. Do it your factor tree way. I just like the upside down division. But you always, always, always have to have a simplified radical. If you just left it at, at 160, say it was a five-point qu five question, I'd probably take off two points because it's not simplified. You always simplify fractions. You always, always, always simplify. Always. All right, last little thing, a reminder. Midpoint. What does the word midpoint mean? Oh, guys, come on. What is mid? Middle, right? You're finding what is the middle point between the two points that we're given. So if you need to remind yourself, your midpoint is of what? Is it 8, negative 7, 4, 5? Yeah? Okay. So you plot these two points, whatever. The middle is the point in the middle. Well, how would you find the middle? What does that midpoint formula say to do with the x's? You add them and do what? Divide by 2. What does it say to do with the y's? Add them and divide by 2. It's literally that simple. Where you guys will make a mistake is you'll subtract. And it'll be all wrong. Because to find the middle of something, you add and divide by 2. So I'm going to say, okay, my midpoint is going to be at 8 plus 4 divided by 2. And negative 7 plus 5 divided by 2. Would it matter if I said 8 plus 4 or 4 plus 8? No. All right, so 8 plus 4 is 12, and 12 divided by 2 is perfect. What's negative 7 plus 5? Negative 2. What's negative 2 divided by 2? Negative 1. So there, guys, is your midpoint. Easy enough? Okay. If you ended up with your midpoint being, let's just say, 4 over 8. Is that an acceptable answer? Are you getting full credit for that? <coughs> no. no. What does that become? One half. One half. Okay. If you get 5 over 2, is that an acceptable answer? <coughs> yes. 
If you want to leave an improper fraction that's simplified, fine. Could you also say this is the same as what? Two and a half? Sure. But why take that extra step where you might make a mistake? If it is an improper fraction and it's simplified, you can leave it. If you had 10 over 4, is that acceptable? No. What would this reduce to? 5 over 2. Okay? Does that make sense? We good? All right, good. Moving on. Find the equation of a line with the given information. <clears throat> we have two equation of line formulas. One of them you guys are super familiar with. It's called slope intercept. What is that one? What's the equation of a line, slope intercept form? There you go. Y equals mx plus b. We're all familiar with that. What is the m in this equation? Slope. And what is the b? y-intercept, okay? If they give you the slope and the y-intercept, it's super easy to write the equation of a line. Given the information in A, you could use the point that they gave you, you could use the slope, you could find the y-intercept, and then write it in slope-intercept form, just depending upon what they ask you to do. What might be easier is to use point-slope form. Anybody remember what point-slope is? That's okay. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. My suggestion to you is to always use point slope form, and then you can convert easily to Y equals MX plus B, slope intercept. And I'll show you why it's a little easier. If you are more comfortable with just using blue, solving for the Y intercept, and then plugging it back into that formula, you are welcome to do so. I just think it's easier to use point slope first. So let's do letter A. See what they give us. What they give us? Your slope is 2, and the point is negative 1, 7. Yep. Yeah? All right. I'm going to just, for my own purposes, to not make any silly mistakes, I'm going to label my point x and y. So if I'm going to use point slope form, say it says they want the equation of the line and y equals mx plus b. Okay, fine. We'll get it there in a second. I like to use point slope because it's just taking that information that they give us, God bless you, and throwing it into the formula. So I have y minus, what is the y1 value that they already gave me? 7, right? Equals, you're fine. What is the slope? 2. And then I have x minus, what is the x that they gave me? Negative 1. I'm actually super glad that when I said what's the y value, you said negative 1. Do you know how easily that mistake is made all the time? That's why I literally write on top, here's my X and here's my Y. So you're visually telling your brain, hey, use this one. Now this is point slope form. Now we use our algebra skills that you guys learned in algebra one to get to Y equals MX plus B. So I have Y minus seven over here equals two. Simplify what's inside the parentheses. What's X minus a negative one? X plus one. Now, in order to get y by itself, what do I have to do to, for this equation? So don't add 7 yet. What should we do first? Distribute. Let's distribute the 2. Good. So y minus 7 equals 2x plus 2. And now what? Add 7 to both sides. So y equals 2x plus 9. Now, some of you would say, well, wait, couldn't we have just, now watch, if you wanted to just use y equals mx plus b, I'm going to do this one time, and then you guys can choose what you want to do. Given the information, you could have said, okay, well, y, what's the y value they gave me? They gave me 7 equals, the slope was 2 times negative 1 plus b, right? If we're trying to get to slope-intercept form, we need to know two things. We need to know the slope and the y-intercept. So we would say, okay, 7 equals negative 2 plus b. I'd add 2 to both sides, and I get b equals 9, correct? Then I would write y equals 2x plus 9, which is the same thing, correct? Some of you are like, oh my gosh, that was so much easier. It is so much easier when you have whole numbers. When you have fractions, it's much easier to do this side. But again, you guys can do either way. You can go from point slope and then just algebraically manipulate it, or you can go right into y equals mx plus b. Find the b and then write your equation. Either way, I don't care. 
Just want to show you both ways. All right, let's look at B. B's information is the slope is negative 3 over 4, and then it's passing through the point 3, negative 2. Okay, so we see a fraction, so we freak out, right? We say, forget it, we can't do it. Some of you will do that. Fractions are our friends, guys. We have to be able to use fractions. So I'm going to go into point slope form. I'm going to say, here's my x, here's my y. So y, is it positive 2 or negative 2? Negative 2, whoops. So y minus negative 2 equals my slope of negative 3 fourths times x minus 3. Does everybody understand where I got all that info from? Yeah? All right, let's just clean it up a little bit. y minus a negative is going to give me what? y plus 2 equals, what do I do with that negative 3 fourths? Got to distribute it, yep. So I have negative 3 fourths x. Negative times a negative is a positive, and then what does this become? 9 over 4. You multiply the numerator, multiply the denominator. <clears throat> All right, last step. How do I get y by itself? I'm going to subtract 2. Okay. So y equals, I have negative 3 fourths x, and then I have, oh gosh, what do I have to have here? Common denominator. So I'm going to keep 9 fourths, and then I'm going to change negative 2 to fourths. Well, how would I do that? What well, I have to multiply the numerator of two, the denominator of 2 by to make it a 4. 4, what you do to the bottom, you do where? To the top. To the top. So this becomes, yep. And remember, it's negative, so that's why I carried that negative sign over there. So what's 9 fourths minus 8 fourths? So minus 1 fourth. And there you go. God bless. There's your slope intercept form. Yep. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> huh? What'd you say? I was saying his name. No. So stay on top of me. Sometimes I do it on purpose just to make sure you guys paid attention. All right, let's figure this one out. All right, they gave me two points here. So I can't really use point slope form yet because I don't have the what? I don't have the slope, do I? Okay, well, let's figure out the slope then. We know the slope formula. Here's my x, bad color choice. Here's x, here's y, here's x, here's y. What goes on top, x or y? Y, so m equals, I'm just going to say 7 minus 1. So what goes on the bottom? Negative 8 minus what? Negative 8. All right, let's simplify here. 7 minus 1 is 6. Negative 8 minus the negatives, that's going to be plus. Oh, I get 0 here. Uh-oh. What's the problem, folks? Undefined. undefined. Thank you, sir, for saying that. Why is this undefined? Because the zero is on the bottom. What would your answer be for your slope if it was 0 over 6? It would be zero slope, okay? There is a difference there. For some reason, this boggles people's minds. All right, we know that a positive line goes like this. We know that a negative line goes like this, but we get confused on which line is zero and which line is undefined. Anybody remember? Going up and down is zero. Up and down is zero. <laughs> it always gets everybody. Look, let's plot these two points. Let's look at this. If I have negative 8, 1, so here's negative 8, and here's 1. So there's the point. And then I have negative 8, 7, so let's say this is 7. What kind of a line do I have here? Is it a vertical line or a horizontal line? It's a vertical line. Up and down, guys. This is the way I used to tell <clears throat> my younger kids when I first started teaching that couldn't understand this. If I was standing right here, and I'm not Spider-Man, can I walk up that wall? No, it's impossible, right? Vertical lines is undefined slope. Now, we try to think of the equation of this line. 
Is it x equals or y, is it y equals? What is that line going through? What axis is it going through? Yep. x equals a number is going to give you a vertical line. If I have a y equals, think about it. I'm standing here. Can I walk across that line? Absolutely. Am I going to go up any or down any? No. Am I going to have to walk uphill or walk downhill? Yes or no? No. It's flat, right? So your slope here on a horizontal line is what? Is it undefined or zero? It's zero. It's not up or down anything. It's just flat. What axis is that line going through? The y. So your y equals a number is going to give you horizontal. That is so hard for us to remember, and I don't really understand why. But you guys have to get that in your brains, all right? Make sure you are paying attention to that. We're good? All right, I added a blank space here just because I want to give you a little bit of notes. You can just write it anywhere. It doesn't matter. But we're going to talk about perpendicular slope versus parallel slope. Do you guys understand the notations there? This is perpendicular. What does the word perpendicular mean? Okay, yeah, I like that. Opposite reciprocal. But what does it mean if two lines are perpendicular? They cross specifically how? They make a 90 degree angle. Good. Parallel means they never, they never touch. So let's talk about the different slopes here. Talk about parallel first. What do you know about parallel lines and their slope? Same slope, right? Super duper important. If I tell you I have a line and the slope is negative two thirds, and I want you to give me a line that is parallel, what slope would you use for a parallel line? Negative two thirds, the same slope, same sign, same number structure. Perpendicular slopes are two different things. They're opposite, opposite sign, and what? Reciprocal. What does it mean to be reciprocal? The three would be on the top, two would be, it just flips. So if I said to you, okay, here's a slope. Five fourths. What is the perpendicular slope to five fourths? It's got to be two things. It's negative because the original one is positive, and then you flip it. So it would be negative four fifths. It has to be both. If I gave you the slope of five fourths and then gave you four fifths and said, is this perpendicular? Your answer would be no. It has to be both opposite sign and flipped over. Okay, here's another one. What if I said I have a slope of negative 3, what's the perpendicular slope? Good. Think about this, guys. As soon as you have a whole number, stick a 1 underneath it so you can visually see it. The opposite of negative would be positive. The opposite of 3 over 1 would be 1 over 3. Agreed? Okay. What about if your slope was 0? What's the perpendicular slope to 0? Ooh, smarty smarts. Because look, there's a one underneath here, right? If I flip zero over one, it becomes one over zero, which is undefined. Awesome. For 10,000 bonus points, what is the equation of this line? Y equals or X equals? X equals a number. Okay, let's think about it. Draw your little XY. If it's going to go through the X... Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, you get 10,000 bonus points on nothing. <laughs> no, we don't do bonus or extra credit. Just do your work and you guys will be good. All right, last slide. I'm going to do this <clears throat> as neatly as possible, okay? This is a problem. I guarantee, star this, circle it, put hearts around it. I guarantee you'll see a question like this on a test or a quiz. Guarantee it. Now, there's a lot to this question, so let's read it. It says, write the equation of a line through a given point, parallel and perpendicular to the line. All right, think about what you need in order to write the equation of a line. You need two things. You need the slope and what? 
the point. Did they already give us a point? Did they give us a point? Yes. Is it beautiful and so easy to work with? Yes, it is, you guys. We're going to love fractions. So negative two-thirds and seven-eighths. Some of you are going to be like, can I just change it to a decimal? First of all, two-thirds is not a terminating decimal, so no. And seven-eighths, you guys don't want to hand divide seven over eight and tell me what the decimal is. So this is the point you're going to use for both of these problems. Now, I need the slope that I'm going to use. And it's going to be two different slopes because I want one line to be parallel and I want one line to be perpendicular. But this is the equation they gave me, 3x plus 4y equals 7. That's not in slope-intercept form. I can't look at that and just say, oh, the slope is 3 because it's in front of the x. How do I figure out what the slope is that they're even talking about? I got to move it. I have to put it into slope-intercept form, yeah? So I need to move the 3 over. How do I do that? Subtract 3x, great. So I have 4y equals negative 3x plus 7. And now what? Ooh, bad color choice. Sorry, divide by 4, everything. So I end up with y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 7 fourths. Now, with what I just did, <clears throat> does 7 fourths matter to me at all in this problem? No. What is important here? The negative 3 fourths. Why? That's the slope. So if I'm going to, this is a long question. There's a lot that goes into this question. If I'm going to write a line that is, let's do parallel first. A parallel line, parallel line to this equation. What is the slope that I'm going to use for this equation, for this parallel line? I'm going to use the same one. It's negative 3 fourths. So over here, when I take this same point, negative 2 thirds and 7 eighths, and I make an equation of a line, what is the slope here for perpendicular that I'm going to use, guys? Positive 4 over 3. Does so everybody see that? Okay. So given a point and an equation in standard form, you have to first find the slope. And then if it tells you you want a parallel line, you use the same slope. If it tells you they want a perpendicular line, you use the opposite reciprocal slope. Yeah? Okay, now we just go back to algebra. Again, in this case, you can do either way. If you guys want to use y equals mx plus b and find the intercepts and all that, or go point slope, it's totally up to you. Since I see all of these fractions, I'm just going to use point slope. I'm going to say y minus. What is the y coordinates or part of our point? 7 eighths, okay, equals my slope is negative 3 fourths times x minus a negative. Are you guys good with me writing two plus two thirds? All right. So now, yes, this is not beautiful, but <clears throat> you guys can handle it. What's the first thing we need to do? Am I going to add seven eighths or am I going to distribute? We're going to distribute. Good. So just hang out here. Seven eighths. I have negative three fourths times X. That's just negative three fourths X. Now, guys, when you're multiplying fractions, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, what's negative 3 times 2? Negative 6, okay. And then what's 4 times 3? 12. Now, right away, my math brain goes, ooh, that simplifies, right? If you, simpl if you don't simplify at this point, no big deal. you got to do it at the end. But I'm going to do it right away because my number is going to be smaller. What is 6 twelfths going to become? One half. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and do it. And then I have one last step. What do I need to do with that negative 7 eighths on the left-hand side? I'm going to add it to both sides. Great. So I'm going to add 7 eighths and add 7 eighths. So y equals negative 3 fourths is good. Now remember, this is a negative 1 half. What's the problem here before I can subtract? I need a common denominator, right? What's going to be a common denominator between 2 and 8? Eight. What do I do to top and bottom? Times four. So this becomes negative what? Negative four over eight. So what's negative four plus seven? Say it again. Yep. So plus three over eight. Now, am I going to have you guys graph this line? No. Want to know why? 
because it's a pain in the butt for me to try to figure out where you guys put a point three eighths as an intercept and your slope of negative three over four. But understand that this is your slope and this is your y intercept, yeah? These two lines should be parallel. Do they have the same slopes? Yeah? Good. Are their intercepts different? Yes. So you're good. All right, let's do this last one and then we're done. All right, point slope form. I'm going to say y minus, what's my y? 7 eighths times, just kidding, equals. Now it's perpendicular, so I have opposite reciprocal slope. And then again, I'm going to say x plus 2 thirds. I'm saying plus 2 thirds because it's minus a negative. Same process, guys. Algebra is lovely like that. You just follow the same process every time. We're going to distribute first. So I still have my y minus 7 eighths hanging out over here. I have 4 thirds x. <clears throat> Multiply your numerators. What's 4 times 2? 8. And then what's 3 times 3? 9. Perfect. Next step. Add what? Add 7 eighths. Perfect. And then you're like, God, Miss Meadows, why couldn't you just make it easier? Because it's Friday, and this is how we do. What is the common denominator between 9 and 8? If I multiply them together, what do I get? 72. Oh, my gosh. Can we handle this, guys? Yes, we can. What do I have to multiply 9 by to make it a 72? Okay, so I'm going to multiply the bottom by 8. So the top by 8, what's 8 times 8? 64, okay. <clears throat> My second, what do I multiply 8 by? 9. 9, if I multiply the bottom by 9, then I have to be fair, multiply the top, what's 9 times 7? 63, good. So I have, this is positive, right? My denominator is 72, and then I add 64 and 63. What's 4 and 3? 7, and then what's 6 and 6? 12. There you guys go. That's not going to reduce. Perpendicular slope there, intercept there. How do we feel? Hmm. <laughs> that was a good question, Jeremy. Do you have to <clears throat> simplify the intercept? Yes, if you can. And then I said, but this one doesn't. Some of you are like, well, how do you know that? Okay, so let's talk about it for a second. Some little tricks here. How do you know if something is divisible by two? It ends in an even number. So right away, I know this isn't going to divide because 127, right? How do you know if something is divisible by three? Three and nine have the same rule. Does anybody know what it is? Add up the digits. What's seven plus two? Nine. Does three go into nine? Then three goes into 27. So add up the digits, one, two, and seven. What's one plus two? Three plus seven. Ten. Does three go into ten? So that's not divisible by three. Four, you've got to divide. How do you know if it's divisible by five? If it ends in a zero or five, do either of those? No. no. Do you guys know the rule for six? If something is divisible by 2 and 3, it's also divisible by 6. So let's look at 72. Does 2 go into 72? Yes. Yeah. Does 3 go into 72? Yep. That means 6 goes into 72. But does 2 go into 127? No. no so 6 not going to. 7, you just got to try it. 8, you got to try it. 9 is the same rule as 3 out of the digits. If 9 goes into it, then you're good. Just a little rule little reminder. I'll remind you guys of that later. So no, that one doesn't simplify. But if it was like 128 over 72, yeah, you just simplify.